The Green City Startup is an initiative of the City of Joburg, which encourages green entrepreneurs to develop ideas in building, energy, water, transport, and waste. With more than 2 million rand in prize money, these innovators help make the city a greener place. Our show keeps you informed about the competition, their progress, and the green economy in general. This is the Green City Startup. This week on our show, our team explores Constitution Hill. We take a look at a fire retardant material for low cost housing. Contestants have a mentorship session with entrepreneur experts. And we chat with an entrepreneur from the fashion house Burgundy Fly on the big interview. Dumelang, hello, and welcome to season two of the Green City Startup. My name is Buna Silesho, and I hope you are ready to explore the world of entrepreneurs. Before we go any further, find us on social media. You can find us on Facebook at The Green City Startup and Twitter at The GC Startup. South Africa has such a rich and diverse history. The heritage sites all around our country are a major part of our story. We decided to visit Constitution Hill in Joburg and learn more about this iconic location significance. Welcome to Constitution Hill. Constitution Hill is one prison in the world where two Nobel Peace Prize laureates were once imprisoned, namely Mr. Mandela and Chief Albert Lutuli, who were both kept here during the treason trial in 1956. What we offer here at Constitution Hill are guided tours for groups of individuals and schools. We also offer tours for corporates. We also have different kinds of special tours. We are now in the Great African Steps. The reason why we call them great is because these are the bricks taken from a demolished prison structure, uh, which was an awaiting trial block, taken down in 2002, paving way for the Constitutional Court. And these steps, they lie between the past, which is the number four section, this side, and the future, which is the Constitutional Court on my right-hand side. Constitution Hill comprises of three prisons. The first prison dates back to 1893. It was built by President Paul Kruger, housed only the white male prisoner. It came up as a result of Johannesburg being discovered as a mining village in 1886 by an Australian prospector by the name George Harrison. After the discovery of gold, President Paul Kruger saw a need for a prison just to maintain law and order in the growing mining village of Johannesburg. The second prison was built for the non-white males. Colored Asians, Africans, they were all classified as non-whites. And that one was built in 1902, where the likes of Robert Sobukwe, Mahatma Gandhi were once kept. This is the food area where food was dished out to the non-white male prisoners. And food was done according to racial lines as it was during apartheid. And these were their diets. And this was supplied by the minister in parliament in 1970. These are the isolation cells, solitary confinement. They were usually called the deep dark holes. Prisoners were kept in isolation for crimes committed inside the prison or if they were political prisoners. Some were kept here for 90 days, some would be here for 180, up to 12 months. Locked inside here, 23 hours a day, just an hour outside. And the lights were kept on 24 hours a day, never switched off. Some of the ex-prisoners testified that the guards would normally come here at night, take a prisoner out of a cell, he would be beaten to death, taken to the mortuary next door, the post-mortem would come back saying he died out of cold. This is a communal cell designed for 30, ended up housing up to 80 prisoners. Overcrowding was a constant problem which led to the closure of this prison in 1983. As dark as it is, it had no lights. The only form of light would come through the openings on top. 
And the last prison was built in 1910, which is the women's prison. It held both blacks and whites kept in separate sections because of apartheid. This was the entrance only for the non-white females. The white females were processed from the other side. This is where both criminals and political prisoners were kept. In most cases, political prisoners were separated because they were regarded as terrorists. Amongst the ex-prisoners here is Winnie Matigizela Mandela, who was kept here on two separate occasions. Firstly, it was in 1958, when they were demonstrating against the carrying of the identity books for women in the CBD of Johannesburg. While she was kept here during that time, she was two months pregnant and she nearly miscarried because of the conditions. Lucky there was Albertina Sisulu, the wife of Walter, who was a midwife at that time, who managed to sort her out. Constitution Hill is now a heritage site and a home to our Constitutional Court. Behind me, it's the door to the Constitutional Court of South Africa. Engraved on the door are 27 basic human rights found in Chapter 2 of the Constitution. So this was once a place where people's rights were violated. It's now where those rights are being protected in the new democratic South Africa. On the Green City Startup Facebook page, we have a lot of help and advice that will assist entrepreneurs in improving and growing their businesses. Brandon is the man behind the information and he's ready to share some more knowledge with us. Hi, if you're not using social media for your business, you may want to reconsider. Twitter is the focus on this one, so I'll be discussing these Twitter tips from Entrepreneur Magazine. Let's check them out. Firstly, customize your tweets. Avoid tweeting headlines and links only. Put a bit more effort into it by quoting others and sharing different types of content. You don't always have to tweet marketing messages. General around the office happenings are good too. Secondly, consider the time of day you're tweeting. There's no use in tweeting great content when your followers aren't online. Twitter has low traffic between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. And it's said that the best times are between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. But this may vary. So check out your analytics and find out when your followers are online. Next up, understand hashtags. Hashtags are great for starting and tracking conversations on Twitter. Remember to hashtag relevant words though. If enough people use your hashtag, it may just end up in the trending section on Twitter. Lastly, words and links are great, but think of better ways to engage your followers. Pictures and videos can be fun and informative, so consider those. So in short, customize your tweets, tweet at key times, learn and understand hashtags, and finally, back your tweets up with visuals. That's all for hints and tips, so be sure to follow us on Facebook at The Green City Startup and on Twitter at The GC Startup. Join the conversation, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep focused. To learn more about The Green City Startup and to stay up to date with all our happenings, you can visit our website, thegreencitystartup.co.za. You can also find us on Twitter at The GC Startup. We'd love to share more stories with you. Science and all things related have never been one of my strengths, so I've always been in awe of people who can create things to better our lives. Such a company is VC Eco Products, which is creating a fire retardant material. We are here at Zanspreit community. The news is full of reports where fires destroy large amounts of dwellings in the informal settlement. The impact is devastating, often resulting in loss of life and damage to property. It is more difficult for the families to rebuild their lives and homes. My name is Jonathan Frost of VC Eco Products, together with my business partner, Peter Bottle. My partner and myself, brainstormed and looked at solutions to how we could stop the spread of fires in the communities. 
and then hence we then came up with, with the, the product. If you plaster on the, any wall structure and metal surfaces at approximately 30 mils, you can get a testing of approximately between 1,000, 1,100 degrees at a pinpoint fire. I do now a pinpoint heating up to about red hot, which is in a region of about 1,200 degrees. We started uh, experimenting to see about insulation, strength, and other possibilities of that material to see what, what it can do and where we can use it in the industry. Whilst it's glowing hot on the, on the one side, the opposite side, will be, it'll be a lot cooler. You won't feel there's no transfer of heat through the, the, the product. And then it won't basically, like normal structures, burns down completely. This will basically bubble back, so it won't affect the full area. We would like to apply the material onto the, the dwelling from the inside, covering the, the support beam structure, which will then prevent it from spreading from one dwelling to your neighbouring dwelling, hence saving lives. We would like to bring it into your housing sector, your entry level going up into your um, industrial sector. We would like to apply it through the, the means of a building block. The building block, the shape was already developed beforehand, but then we managed to find that mould and we then have um, done a, a mix of our VC product with other material as a binding material and have made this particular building block. If we could then build from uh, scratch new buildings with the building block would be ideal. So it is our aim to manufacture a mold and then start manufacturing the building block in the injection molding. We're currently running tests on, on the product at the moment, obviously to implement, to get it into the market. With our product, we would like to give to the communities an, a product which is eco-friendly, energy-saving, recyclable, cost-effective, and saves lives. VC Eco Products has definitely found a product which will benefit our society. So when you're brainstorming your next great idea, try to keep our country's needs in mind. Still to come, the mentors continue to train and support the finalists from the Green City Startup and other City of Joburg competitions. We get a news update from Nolo on entrepreneurial matters in the City of Joburg. And later, we sit with Nobesetu Ndovu, co-founder of the fashion house Burgundy Fly, on the big interview. It's all happening right here on the Green City Startup, so don't go anywhere. Do you have an idea or innovation that could improve your township? Can you identify a problem in your community that could be solved in a new and different way? This is a call for innovative entrepreneurs with ambition and commitment to accept our challenge. Josie My Beginning is an entrepreneurial competition that's coming right to your doorstep for its second round of investment. We're looking for your idea, product or service in the area of retail, micro-manufacturing, agriculture, recycling, education and skills development. 60 startups from six Josie townships will receive training and funding to expand their community businesses. We'll be building micro malls, hubs where developing businesses or businesses expanding into the formal economy can grow in our communities. Enter the next round of the Josie My Beginning competition and you could change your township and your life. Josie My Beginning. Building businesses in townships for townships. Welcome back to the greenest entrepreneurial show in Umzansi. If you log on to the Green City Startup Facebook page, 
you'll see that we source and share information about entrepreneurial matters in and around Joburg. This information can help you on your journey as an entrepreneur. So do read, like and share so that you can stay informed. A major part of the Green City Startup Competition is the mentor's input and guidance. This is because we believe in order to be successful, it is beneficial to be trained and supported by the industry's best. Here is Liz Dom from Inquisition to tell us what the Green City Startup and other City of Joburg Competition contestants learned this week. Hello, and welcome to our series on designing and growing a strong and successful business. We've covered how to craft an elevator pitch in our webisode on pitch preparation. Now we're ready to promote your business. Content often forms the bulk of a business's offering, yet many organizations create content for content's sake. Now here is an experimental approach to content design. But what is content design? In a nutshell, it's a framework for communication design, where the content is a message with a clear meaning. This fulfills the original purpose of your business. Content design starts with user needs. Good content design allows people to do or find out what they need simply and quickly using the most appropriate content format available to suit user needs. This is where content strategy and design fits in. Depending on what your user needs are, you may need to reduce the amount of content you plan to publish, split one big piece of content into smaller pieces, change the format of the content, or remove the content entirely. Our approach to content design is experimental, from mapping content values using a content canvas model and consumer needs using an experiment board, we are able to pinpoint exactly what your business ought to be producing. Content design is a considerate process where the consumer is placed at the centre. By applying an experimental approach, you'll be able to quell assumptions and direct your content efforts towards making an impact. For materials mentioned and more information, visit our website where we summarize these tools and tips to help you significantly grow your customer base. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of our training sessions, you can visit our website, thegreencitystartup.co.za. You can also access shorter downloadable information from the site. I had the chance to sit with a top South African entrepreneur, Nobusetu Ndlovu, who co-founded the fashion house Burgundy Fly. Next, the big interview. Joining me in studio, we have a businesswoman and the co-founder of Burgundy Fly, who will be teaching us and sharing some knowledge on the fashion industry and how to build your own brand. We have Nobesutu Ndlovu. Welcome to the show, Nobesutu. Thank you. No, Mr. Tu, Burgundy Fly is a very strange name. Please tell us where it comes from. So the term Burgundy Fly is really a take on, if you think of the color Burgundy, it's your velvets, your um, maroons, those royal colors. So we thought you, we're, we're trying to build a brand that speaks of royalty and sophistication. And Fly, it's the take on the colloquial slang that you look so good. So we're looking for a combination of royalty that looks fly in the current um, sense. Sure, yeah. that's gorgeous. And when you're building your brand, when a person wants to build their brand, what are the different elements that they must take into consideration? I think from my side, I studied an IT degree with absolutely no background in terms of the retail aspect. So I think it's quite important for you to do some sort of analysis around that industry that you're doing. What have the competitors done? What have people that you aspire to be like? What have they done? So do a bit of research before you actually start. But most importantly, believe in yourself because I'm in an industry that I did not study for. It is purely because of self-belief and a lot of research that we're, we're here where we are right now. So I I think understanding your market is quite an important um, aspect. 
And saying that you are from the IT industry, we, we saw that you also went to Gibbs. Um, obviously, that means you know business and you, you well read in terms of business. But what about the creative out there who has no business savvy whatsoever? How do they bridge that gap? I think it's important for the creative out there who hasn't got any background to speak to people in the industry. I think a lot of people are more helpful than we actually think they are or would be. When we started the business, we spoke to a lot of people who had their own boutiques already. We spoke to designers who were in the industry. And that kind of helped us bridge the gap in terms of the creative gap. So for creatives, my suggestion to them is for them to speak to people who are, are in the business world, be it via the business schools or currently people who own their own business, even if it's not in the same fraternity. I think the elements of business are pretty much the same um, throughout. Um, try stick to people that are in retail. That will help a lot. But my key theme there is speak to people. People are most, more, more often than not, are likely to help. And you were part of the Standard Bank Incubator, am I correct? Yes, that's right. How did you find that experience or what did you benefit from it rather? So the incubator, I, I particularly liked the... Um, the, the, the program that they ran because it focused on bringing industry experts and people who have done things in business to give you practical ideas and thoughts in terms of what you can do around product, pricing, positioning, etc. So, you know, when people speak from a point of truth and authenticity, you're more likely to take that information and actually utilize it because you've seen people that have actually gone through whatever it is that they've gone through as opposed to a textbook. And no offense to the lectures, obviously, but, you know, from a learned person versus somebody that's experienced. So it was more that real life experience that they brought into us then taking lessons from those real life experiences. Sure. Yeah. And the, you know, you have the ladies in the communities, they're good at needlework, they're good at making clothes and things, but they don't have access to resources such as market tools or social media to brand themselves. What can they do to, to get their name and their products out there? I think there's a huge opportunity for collaboration. Mm -hmm. And when people go in their individual uh, selves to retailers, it's usually not as effective. And we know that the ladies in the community are typically a group of many people and they know a lot of people. So my first suggestion is collaborate with as many peers as possible so you almost build a consortium. You then need to approach a, re a retailer who is looking for your product and a lot of retailers are looking for the authentic uh, African print or beaded work that the ladies are doing. And there is also a need for helping the community in terms of CSI from larger corporates. So I think it's worthwhile for those ladies to also try to see who can they speak to in the different companies where CSI is something that they are focusing on and they can use that as a inroad into larger corporates. And when you built your brand or in the process of it, choosing the lady that you want to cater for in your fashion and your designs, how did you do that? To be honest, it was solving my own problems. So I was working and um, I had a job that was paying me reasonably well, but yet I still couldn't reconcile buying a garment um, for more than 1,800 Rand, as an example, at the time. And if I look at my budget, I should have been able to afford it. But because my disposable income was not as much as it could have or should have been, I had to think a couple of times before I buy a garment for 1,800 rand. So I thought, how can we ensure that people who are like myself, working, able to afford basics and a little bit more in their life, how can they then afford a beautiful garment and look beautiful when they go to work every day? I really got bored of the black suits, gray, gray pants, white shirt look, and I wanted to look a little bit more vibrant and also at the same time look unique. And that's what designers offer. So I was trying to bridge the gap for myself, actually. Awesome. And can you just to, just to end off, give us some words of encouragement for that young creative who has no idea where to go, but definitely has the drive and wants to start? I think for that creative, you can certainly do it. Just believe in yourself. Do your research. Uh, speak to people that are in the industry. Most people are more than willing to speak to you, even if they don't know you. And just go for it, but make sure that you're comfortable in terms of who you are and the craft that you're doing. Ensure that your work is quality and the rest will, will take effect. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Novisi. It was Thank so you. great having you. Thank you. Well, that's all from me, Puna Silisho, and our guest, Novisi, right here on The Big Interview.
what an inspiring woman. Many of our South African creatives can definitely learn from her and follow in her footsteps. Next, some entrepreneurial news. In the headlines today, Joburg gets a market exclusively for ladies. First Thursdays encourages entrepreneurship in Joburg. Entrepreneurs hook up over dinner. Hello, my name is Mukherta with this week's Green City Startup News. A market exclusively for ladies is launching this weekend in Randburg. The ladies' lifestyle market promises to bring together fashion, food and an all-round pampering experience for ladies. It opens this Saturday the 2nd of July and caters to women of all ages. There's also an entertainment area for children so that you can enjoy some well-deserved pampering while a professional team looks after the kids. The first week of every month in Johannesburg sees some of the most creative entrepreneurs come out to play. On the first Thursday of each month, the night markets are the go-to places for food, fashion and entertainment. The Neighbour Goods Market in Bramfontein offers two floors filled with craft beverages, seasonal food, clothing and jewellery, while the stall night market in Krugersdorp caters to a niche food and wine market with live entertainment and a vibrant atmosphere. And finally, the Hookup Dinners offers a unique experience for entrepreneurs. The initiative was established to give startups from across the country the opportunity to connect, engage and contribute to each other's success. The dinners were originally established to serve as a dynamic gathering of entrepreneurs, but have since evolved into a marketplace where corporates partner up for economic empowerment. The hookup dinners take place on the first Thursday of every month in Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban and Pretoria. And that's the news for this week. Remember to keep in touch with us through our social media pages or stay up to date by visiting our website www.thegreencitystartup.co.za And from the news team, it's goodbye. Next week, you don't want to miss out on our program because we see how some of our contestants are progressing in their inventions. We visit Bedford Park where residents have revamped some open land and we rub shoulders with another expert on the big interview. Just before I go, don't forget to connect with us on social media. You can find us on the Green City Startup Facebook page and Twitter at the GC Startup. That's all from the Green City Startup team and me, Bunasilisho. See you next week. Cheerio.